words of praise, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, how good it is to be in the presence of Almighty God one more time. He spared our life and he summons us to this holy place that we could gather around the sacred word to hear what thus says the Lord. I believe that he has something to say today. The challenge is if, if you have ears to hear what thus said the Lord. The word of God comes to us from the book of Acts chapter 9 beginning at verse 4. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. So he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose on the ground, and when his eyes were open, he saw no one. But they laid him by the hand, led him by the hand, and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus, there Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here am I, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. The Lord said to him, Go, for he is a vessel chosen of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laid hands on him. He said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. For the next 30 to 45 minutes I have before you, I want to challenge you from the topic, When God Speaks. When God Speaks. I want to suggest to you today that God is speaking, but maybe there aren't too many of us listening. Sometimes we are challenged and we say that I did not hear anything from God. But maybe it isn't that God is not speaking, it may be something to do with our hearing. Let me tell you a little story. There was a man who had difficulty communicating with his wife. And he concluded that she must be hard of hearing. Her hearing was diminishing. So he decided to conduct a test without her knowing. One evening he sat in a chair on the far side of the room. Her back was to him and she could not see him. So quietly he whispered, can you hear me? There was no response. Moving a little closer, he asked again, can you hear me? Still no reply. Quietly he edged closer and whispered the words, but still there was no answer. Finally, he moved right in behind her chair and said, Can you hear me? To her chagrin, she responded, irritated. She said, For the fourth time, yes. <laughs> 
sometimes we accuse God of not speaking when we have difficulty hearing. But God is, is not the one that is silent in our time of trouble. God is not the one that doesn't have a word to answer. But we can become distracted with so many voices in the world. I, I don't know about you, but the older I live, I've gotten selective hearing. Maybe you have that disease too. You hear, sound like you've got that problem to it. I don't know if there's any prescription for it. I don't know if there's any cure for it. But you see, sometimes people will do things that I choose not to answer. Sometimes people will attack you and you've got to choose not to answer that attack. Sometimes you will see like you don't see and hear like you don't hear because you want to preserve what it is that God has placed inside of you. And the challenge sometimes is to block out the things that are distracting you from the voice of God. So many voices. We can hear the radio blasting. We can hear the commentators speaking. We can hear the talk show. We can hear the politicians. We can hear the preachers. That we could miss the still, solid, consistent voice of God. In our text today, we're seeing that God is speaking. And sometimes when God speaks, things happen that maybe are not on our agenda. If you'll lend me 15 more minutes, I maybe could say something that will transform your Sunday today. I promise you it will be challenging because this message is not about your neighbor. This message is about you. Amen. That all of us have something that happens when God speaks to us. In our text, the disciples have waited, and they've waited for 10 days, and now the Holy Spirit has been given to them and to every believer that once the church has been growing and the opposition all of a sudden pops up out of nowhere. A young man named Saul has been wantingly stumping on Christians. He's been sitting by and allowing them to be killed by stones and now he's at the front of the line and he believes he's doing the will of God trying to crush this cult. That's important that, that this assignment Saul is on, he believes it's a God-given assignment. He believes he's on the Lord's assignment. He believes that he's doing the will of the God and he is trying to stop this Jesus movement. That is perverting Judaism. That is trying to give new life into Judaism. And so he's putting Jesus followers in jail. And even sentencing some of them to death. He is on his journey now to pick up some more Jesus followers. He's on his horse and he, he's riding. And as he is riding through, he has an encounter with God speaking to him. He has a transformative motion. He has a transformative time in destiny where God simply speaks and his life changes forever. Some of you believe that if you could win island luck, if you could spin, if you could hit the law, if you could catch a number, that your life will change forever. I want to suggest to you that while you're listening to God, you could be a changed creature today. That, that your life could be irreversible. That you could move to a place that you never thought you would be at if you just hear what God is saying to you. That so many times we're going on last month's instruction. Some of us only check in with God every Every quarter, every quarter, I'm preaching to you. you. Some of you, I only see you New Year's, I see you Easter, I see you Mother's Day, sometimes Father's Day, I see you Christmas, and then I see you again New Year, because you've got a quarterly instruction from God. But some of you have figured out that God can move you to another place in the midst of three months. That three months you can be from one job to another. I wish I could preach to someone. In three months you can go from high to low. In three God can change your life forever. So it behooves me to walk with God, to talk with God, to get an update on his instruction. I said to the early morning service, you know what's happened to me? Sometimes you listen to the GPS more than you listen to God. I've been in some places just the other day. I've never driven in Cleveland. 
never ever in my life. But I was tired of sitting around waiting for people to pick me up. So I went to the airport, purchased the GPS, rented a car, I was on the road. For the first time ever, I rode from Cleveland to Michigan. And it was raining. The only thing I could trust was the voice. Someone say a voice. The, 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 the voice said, stay on this road 17 more miles. That, that when I crest the hill, it said, you've got 150 miles and you've reached your destiny. I said, oh Lord my God, how excellent is your name. Now, now here's the thing. I had to trust the GPS because I did not know where I was but some of us act like we know. Some of us act like we've been here before. Some of us act 